Okay, so now we need to determine the slope of a line with the, with the equation in the general form. There's two ways to do this. You could graph this, so you could find the x and y intercept like we just did, graph it, and then count the slope, but there's an easier way. If we can get it in the form, in the slope intercept form, so that is the form y is equal to mx plus b, we can determine the slope pretty easily because the slope is just going to be the m value. So, uh, again, this is just going to be algebraic manipulation to try to get the y isolated on the left side of the equation, and that will automatically put this equation in the form y is equal to mx plus b. So let's go ahead and do that. So 3x minus 2y minus 16 is equal to 0. I'm going to move everything over to the right side, and I'm going to isolate y. So I'm going to start by moving that 16. I'm going to add 16 to both sides. Now these cancel out. I get 3x minus 2y is equal to 16. And then I'll move my 3x. So I'll subtract 3x from both sides. And these cancel out. I get negative 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 16. And I didn't tag the 3x, the negative 3x on the right, because I want to try to keep it uh, in this form. So I end up with negative 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 16. And then my final step is to divide both sides by negative 2. Uh, these cancel out, isolating my y. Uh, remember, when we're dividing multiple terms by a single number, we make sure that we divide negative 2 from both terms. So negative 3 divided by negative 2. I'll keep that as a fraction, but it turns into positive uh, 3 over 2, x. And then we have 16 divided by negative 2. That's going to give me negative 8. And now my slope is pretty easy to pick out. It's going to be my m value, which is right here. So the slope in this case is 3 halves or 3 over 2. So give this one a try. Pause the video here and come right back. There you go, and let's move on. Okay, so here's the final example in this section. And this might seem really confusing at first, but we're actually gonna break this down into parts to make it a little easier to handle. So, this question's telling us that we have peanuts that cost two bucks for every 100 grams. We have raisins that cost a dollar for every 100 grams. And we have Devin, who has $10 to purchase both of these items. So what they're really asking is, what different combinations of peanuts and raisins can I have for 10 bucks? I can have a whole bunch of different combinations of the two. I can have only peanuts and no raisins. I can have no raisins and only peanuts. Uh, or I can have a bunch of different combinations of peanuts and raisins. So the first thing it's going to ask us is to generate some data for this relation. So that's actually asking us to create a table of values, something we're pretty familiar with. And using that table of values, it's going to want us to graph the data on a line. And from that line, it's going to ask us to create an equation in the general form, so that's the form we've talked about today, and then it's going to want us to use the graph and the equation to prove whether these next two statements are true or false. So let's get right into it. Uh, this is the exact same question, I've just broken it down into different steps. So the first step is asking us to generate some data for the relation, so that's talking about a table of values. So let me draw my table right away. And now we have to figure out which pieces of information are actually going to be the variables in this equation. And I'll tell you right off the bat that it's not the $10. The $10 is a value that doesn't change. It's always the same. It doesn't vary. Therefore, it's a constant. So it's definitely not going to be one of our variables. So that leaves us with peanuts and raisins. And we're actually going to be talking about the mass of peanuts and raisins. So we're going to be talking about the, the mass in grams of the two. So those are my two variables. I'm going to call peanuts P, and I'm going to call raisins R. And both of these we're going to be measuring in grams. So it wants us to create some data that represents different combinations of raisins and peanuts that we can purchase for 10 bucks. And the easiest route to go is to start off by saying, how many peanuts can I have if I buy zero raisins? Well, so that means I have zero grams of raisins. If I spent no money on raisins, I spent all of my 10 bucks on peanuts. So $2 per 100 grams for peanuts, two goes into 10, five times. So 500 times 100, 
I get 500 grams of peanuts. There's a point on the line. That would be represented by 500 and 0. That's what that coordinate would look like. And if you're perceptive, you should notice right away that it actually is an intercept point. That's going to be the x-intercept, or the point at which it hits the x-axis, or the domain. Well, let's do the opposite now. Instead of buying no raisins and only peanuts, let's buy no peanuts and only raisins. So, raisins are a buck per 100 grams. I have 10 bucks. That gives me 1,000 grams worth of raisins. So that would be the point 0, 1,000. And that would actually be the y-intercept, the point at which it hits the y-axis. Even though I have two points, I could technically graph the line, but we like to find at least three points because we want to make sure that this is a linear relationship, which means it creates a straight line. If we generate three points and they all lie on the line, chances are this is a linear relationship. So let's create one more point. We've used up all our intercepts, so now we have to create a combination of raisins and peanuts. So let's say, and I'm just using any number at all, I'm just going to say that I spent $4 on peanuts. Well, $4 on peanuts would give me 200 grams because $2 goes into 4 twice, and that's 200 grams. If I spent $2 on peanut or $4 on peanuts, that leaves me $6 to spend on raisins. And they're a dollar per 100 grams, so that gives me 600 grams of raisins. And that would be the point 200, 600. And now I can graph my data. So first thing I have to do is label my graph. I have to make sure that I'm using a scale that's appropriate that uses as much of the graph as possible. I've already put the labels on to save time. Uh, so this is going to be raisins, and this is going to be peanuts on the bottom. Now, I could have flipped this. I could have put peanuts as the range and raisins as the domain. It wouldn't have made a difference. I just chose it this way because this is the way it was written in the question. Peanuts came first. All right. So our first point is 500 and 0, that's this point here, that's an intercept point. Our next one is 0 and 1,000, that's another intercept point. And our next one is 200 and 600. So this is our point 200, and 600 is right here. Now if this is a linear relation, all those points should lie on the line. So let's draw a line through them. And there we go. All on the line, perfect. Now, most of the time we draw lines through points and draw arrows on the end to represent that the lines go on forever. We're not going to here because this line does not go on forever. I can't buy any more than 1,000 grams of raisins because I only have $10. I can't buy any more than 500 grams of peanuts because I only have 10 bucks. So this line is actually going to end here and here. I don't draw it beyond those points. All right, so we've generated some data. Uh, we've graphed the data. And now we get to write an equation in general form. Well, I can't plug everything in in general form yet because I have to use one of the three forms that we've learned in previous lessons first. I have to either use the slope intercept form, the slope point form, or the coordinate form. And I'm going to use the slope intercept form because that's the form that most of you guys are pretty comfortable with, and that's in the form y is equal to mx plus b b being the y-intercept, and m being the slope. Well, I have the y-intercept. It's 1,000. It hits at 1,000 here. And all I'm really missing is the slope. So let's do our slope calculations here. Remember, our slope is rise over run. And I'm going to use this graph to figure that out. I'll use any two points on the graph to figure out my slope. I'll use the two endpoints here just because that makes it easy. So starting here, my rise is negative 1,000 over, and my run is positive 500. That's going to give me a slope of negative 2, because negative 1,000 divided by 500 is negative 2. So I have a slope of negative 2. I have a y-intercept of 1,000. And now I can write my equation. All right, so it's going to be y is equal to m is negative 2, x plus 1,000. And in fact, we're not going to use x and y, because in this case, we're using p and r. So to keep it consistent, let's actually use those values. p is the domain, so it's the x value, and r is the range, so it's the y value. So let's sub those in. So it's going to be r, representing raisins, is equal to negative 2, p plus 1,000 just like that. 
but that's not in general form. And it's asking us to put it in general form, and that's in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. So all we need to do is a little algebraic manipulation. Remember when we're going into general form, uh, we want to do four steps. The first step is to simplify, but we can't simplify there. The second step is to get rid of the fractions. We don't have any. And the third step is to move everything to the left side of the equation. So let's go right ahead and start doing that. Uh, I'm going to move my negative 2p first. So I'm going to add 2p to both sides. Remember, my p represents my x value, so it's going to go in front. It's going to go to the left. So I'm going to have 2p plus r is equal to, these cancel out, positive 1,000. Uh, let's get this negative, let's get this 1,000 out of here by subtracting 1,000 from both sides. That's going to give me 2p plus r minus 1,000 is equal to, these cancel out, so that leaves me with 0. And that's it. That is in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. But remember, we've replaced the y with the raisins and the x with the peanuts. Now let's just move this up here. And there we go. Done. We have an equation in general form. So now we need to use the graph and the equation to prove whether these statements are true or false. So this one asks, will Devin spend exactly 10 bucks if she buys 300 grams of peanuts and 400 grams of raisins? Well, if she can buy 300 grams of peanuts and 400 grams of raisins with 10 bucks, that point should lie on this line. If it doesn't, that means she cannot buy that combination of peanuts and raisins for 10 bucks. So let's go 300 grams of peanuts. Well, that's going to be here, and 400 grams of raisins, that's right here. So that lies in the line, that's definitely a true statement. Some of the questions will also ask you to use the equation to prove that. All you need to do is take those numbers, substitute them into the appropriate variable. So 300 will go in for P, 400 will go in for R, and then you simplify it. If the left side is equal to zero, then you know it's true. In other words, if the left side is equal to the right side, then it's true. If the left side doesn't equal the left side, then it's not true. So that's the first one. Uh, let's see the next question. Will Devin spend exactly 10 bucks if she buys 400 grams of peanuts and 300 grams of raisins? Well, 400 grams of peanuts is here, and 300 grams of raisins is way up here. That is definitely not a point on the line. So this is not true. And if we subbed in 400 for P and 300 for R, the left side would not equal the right side. So that's not a true statement. And that's it. Okay, so this is the question I want you to try on your own. Now I know this isn't the same question that's in your handout. Uh, the one that was in your handout I found was a little too difficult, so I'd like you to try this one instead. You can see, use the same table that's in your handout, uh, but do this question instead of the one with the, with the ribbon. So I'll start you off with this one. It's a similar type of question, but instead of having $10 to buy peanuts and raisins, we have $45 to rent new and old releases. New releases at the video store go for five bucks, and old releases go for three bucks. So to create a table of values, we're actually gonna be dealing with the number of new releases, and we'll call that N, and the number of old releases. We're gonna call that O. And this is going to be the number of new and old releases that we can get and combinations thereof for $45. So try this on your own, answer these questions, generate a graph, a generated equation in the general form, and then come back and I'll give you the answer. So pause the video here. Okay, so this is the equation you should have gotten. The answer is to B are no and yes. And this is what your graph should have looked like depending on the scale that you've chosen. And that's it.